Alrighty. Okay. So today we want to take a few minutes and just show how to create a little picture in picture inside vMix and how quickly it is to do that. So um, it's a pretty simple process. And somebody, a friend of mine asked me to do this over the weekend. And so I want to be sure to produce that. And uh, let's do that now. So the first thing you want to do inside vMix is click on add input. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a little screen that looks like this. And so on this screen, and oops, I believe that that is, okay, and on this screen, we are going to, uh, we wanna select our primary, our background for what we wanna do. So in this instance, I wanna use the computer screen, you know, uh, that is showing my PowerPoint or whatever, right? So I've got two screens, I'm running my computer on one of them and running PowerPoint on one of them, and then I'm showing it on a projector on another. Now there's a couple ways to do this. The first way is you could run something called screen capture and, or uh, is it called screen capture now? You can run, I'm running it, I should probably know. It is called, yeah, screen capture. On a PC it's called screen capture, which is one of the NDI tools that is a part of the NDI tools kit. So ndi.tv slash tools. And inside there, there is a, in the NDI 5, there's something called screen capture. And what it does is it makes a NDI stream of whatever screens that you have using the resolution from the screens, all right? Now you can go in and customize it, but for today's demonstration purposes, we're just going to generate an NDI screen on uh, screen capture. You can also inside vMix just use a native screen capture, okay? So in here, there are two options. You can say desktop capture and local desktop, and then you can pick the display that you want and it will just take the signal from your video card that's running display too. But NDI can be a little bit more versatile with that and this can actually help kind of lower the the, uh, the CPU usage on it. So if I click on NDI, it's gonna find all my NDI sources. Now in the support office, I've got lots of NDI sources. So you're not gonna see all of these, but you will see down here probably your desktop if you're running screen capture and screen capture needs to run every time you run the computer. So maybe add that to the startup. And you can do that by going to start and then you type in run, okay, run app. And then it's gonna open up a little window that looks like this. And you type in shell semicolon startup and that's gonna open up your startup window. So anytime Windows starts, it's going to run these programs that are in here. And you've seen that I added screen capture. So every time Windows logs in, it turns on screen capture to get started, okay? So I want that to run every time Windows turns on and I put it inside the startup app. That's a little, that's bonus today. That's a little extra tip for you. And then, uh, so now that screen capture is running, it's capturing an NDI signal from both of our uh, screens. Not only is it doing the vMix screen, which is this one, but it's also capturing the output of the second monitor. And so that's that one, all right? So I'm gonna hit okay. And that is going to add an input on my inside vmix this is input 36 and you want to click on the cog wheel which is going to open this okay so you can see this is the source that i'm running now which is an ndi stream coming into vmix then what i want to do is i want to decide on the other source that i want to use and so i've got a camera or i've got something coming into vmix which is probably already an input so if you're using vmix and you're running a camera you can just say i want to add a layer and inside here, we can scroll down and say, I wanna do picture in picture, okay? So this is the base source, okay? So we wanna add something to source number two, not one, okay? Source number two. And here, all I do is I add my camera. So this is a P200 that I'm using, but I pick my source off the list that is my camera. And here I am in the corner, right? Now it's the full source, and it's taking up a fair bit of room, right? What I wanna do then is I want to, maybe I don't wanna crop it, I want you to see the full frame of my image, but what I wanna do is I wanna position it correctly. And so I'm going to actually pan, oh, I'm sorry, wrong source. I'm going to reset this, and I'm gonna select source two, okay? So that's the layer two of my source, which is my, my camera, okay? And I'm going to pan this into a location that I want to use. So if I want to use the full frame, I can just make this, you know, tuck this down here in the corner. And then remember when you're creating slides that you're going to have 
almost a, th- a fourth of the slide being consumed by uh, by your image. Now, maybe I don't need the I don't need the speaker to be this big, and so I could actually zoom down my picture so that it doesn't take up quite as much real estate. And then I could position this all the way over to the side and all the way down. And so now, a little bit more, now I'm just down here in the corner and the camera that's watching you deliver your sermon or your lecture or whatever is going to be down here in the corner, whereas now the slides that are happening on the screen are going to be happening on the majority of the, the, the signal. So now, if I close this, so we're not done with this demonstration just yet, but if I close this and I select this source, this is what it looks like. Okay, so the screen is here, and I'm down here in the corner, and I can show my slides, my primary slides, and I can be the talking head in the corner, especially depending on how the camera is situated. You know, hopefully it's a little close so that people can make out you talking. If you're small in this source, right? So if we were to go, let us let me demonstrate this a little bit here. So this is that P200. If my camera source, if I'm like way far away, I don't know if I can back this off any more than what it already is because it's pretty close to begin with. But if I were to, yeah, make this like way far away and then I were to cut over to that source, right? It's going to make me look really teensy tiny in the frame, okay? So be very conscious that if you make your picture this small in in the corner of a picture in picture, you really need to be the subject of your camera needs to be fairly big. And so we're going to do this intimate talking moment where we're going to get all nice and close to each other. And you need to take up the majority of the frame so that people who are watching your show can see the content, but can still make out some details about you, right? So if you're just doing that, then you can uh, you can attach it like that. Okay, cool. So this is step one. Picture in picture, it's pretty simple. You can be done at this point, okay? Uh, so here's another thing though that I wanna show you about that is now I'm gonna share this screen again. I'm actually gonna go back to this one because it's a little easier to, to show. But here, uh, inside position, we can actually put this anywhere we want, first of all, okay? So any any part of the screen by just dragging the pan X, Y. But one of the things that you can do is if you're going to stand in the center of your screen, like say you're at a lectern or something and you're, you're just giving a speech and you're not going to move in the frame and you don't have a cameraman, you can even crop this to look like the one that you're watching. So see how I'm up here in the corner? Well, you've noticed that I don't have the extra green on the sides. And what I've done is I've clicked on cropping and I've adjusted this to just basically be my face, okay? And it's both up, down, and left, and right. So you need to be conscious about that. But then again, I can then position this even closer to the edge to expose more. So now it looks like this, okay? Which is pretty much a carbon copy of what you were watching earlier. But it, now it's basically just this. It's it's my talking head and it's the rest of my slide is taking up the remainder of the screen. So that's how I built this output, okay? Uh, I also cropped off the start menu in, uh, in the screen share because I don't want to show the start menu. Uh, so you can do the same thing. If we were to go here, we could say main one and then I could crop the bottom. How do I do that here? Uh, it's this one, right? So yeah, I could crop the bottom off and then you wouldn't see the start menu. See how that basically just says like, okay, there's nothing that's going to be show, shown. And for you on YouTube or whatever, it's just a black bar. But they can't see you then like selecting these, like the start menu buttons or anything like that. It's just cropped off. So you can choose to do that. You just have to select the source. Remember the main source is going to be your your big whatever it is that you're showing on the background. And then because we we clicked on this layer business, it makes number two is my talking head and that's the one that I've edited. All right. Okay, hopefully that's pretty straightforward and, and helpful. And uh, let me know in the comments if uh, you need additional information on that. But there is setting number one as to how to do that uh, correctly. And I'm going to also then cut back to my main camera. So... Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments and like or dislike if you want more or less of that, co- that content and I will try and do that more often for you.